beautiful souls. It's Julie, and I wanted to take a moment here because this podcast episode that you're about to listen to, I actually recorded a while back with Adria, and I couldn't stop thinking about it because um, as much as I wouldn't like to admit it, and as much as I'd like to be eloquent all the time, I think that there were some ways that I worded things throughout this episode that I wish I would have worded better. Um, And so I wanted to take a moment to be direct with you here because I felt like in this episode, as I like thought about it and thought about it, I kind of beat around the bush and wasn't as direct as I wanted to be. What I want to say is without a shadow of a doubt, what is happening within Ukraine is one of just the worst things that I've ever witnessed happen, right? And while I am so taken aback by what's happened and so concerned and so hurt and hurting along with the the people of Ukraine and trying to help in any way, shape, and form that I can, um, what I was trying to say and where I want to be direct here is that I know that there are a lot of people who are really worried about the world getting pulled back into another world war. And I wanted people to hear me say that as I've been in meditation over the last month, and I got to tell you, to begin with, when this all started, the energy was very, very heavy, right? And I was just trying to um, feel my way through it as everybody else was. Um, but what started to happen a couple weeks in is I started to feel just the most large angel presence here on earth, um, that I've ever felt. And I feel angel presence all the time, but it's magnified right now. And I want you to really tap into that energy and feel it for yourself because it's for a reason. The angels really want to reassure you. They want to reassure everyone that they're working so hard right now to bring peace to earth. And that is the message that I wanted to come across in today's episode. Um, I feel it's my own personal belief that if just one human loses their life due to a lack of peace, that that's one life too many that's lost. And we really need the help of God, universe, source, and the angels um, right here, right now. And what they want for us is to visualize peace on earth, to hold the vibration of peace within ourselves, within our bodies, within our minds, and really bring more peace into our own lives. When situations arise um, that would normally irritate us, right? I know that Um, Again, we're trying to do everything in every way, shape, and form that's within our power to help over in Ukraine. But one thing that you might not think of is just where do you bring more peace into your everyday life? If you are, you know, at... Uh, target and you're waiting in line to return something and you're just getting frustrated because the person in front of you is taking too long um, and it's something that would really normally irritate you. Maybe you're normally calm in that scenario. Maybe it's something else for you. Whatever it is, I want you to look at your own life and say, hey, Where do I get frustrated? Where do I get annoyed? Where do I get irritated? Where do I step out of alignment and really come into this place of a lack of peace within my own life? Is it even with yourself where you get frustrated with yourself? If we're wanting to raise the vibration here on the planet, if we're really wanting to bring earth into a state of peace, it has to start with ourselves too. And so So that's one thing that you can do to make yourself feel as though you're making a contribution, right? And again, if we can donate with our dollars, if we can take a family into our homes, you know, whatever it is that's calling on our hearts to do, we want to do those things too. But it also starts with bringing more peace into our lives. So um, I know that we're not... We're never choosing the cards 
that we're dealt in life. Um, but I know that if we allow it, spirit will use what's happening in the world right now to bring more peace to the planet, um, more peace that can guide our leaders, peace that can guide the collective consciousness and peace that can really, again, guide us within our own individual lives. So as we experience this together, open yourself to more peace pray, do whatever you can to help people who are suffering. Um, and this is what I wanted you to take away from today's episode. So without further ado, let's dive into this episode. Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to the Angels and Awakening podcast. I'm your host and author, Julie Jancis. And today we're here with one of my favorite people, Adria Turner. She is a healer on my Angel Wellness Center team. And what she does is intermix, right? Because in my Angel Reiki school, I teach people how to intermix all of their different gifts to create your own unique business with the intention of serving servitude, right? Serving as many people as possible um, to help this planet and, and everybody come into a higher vibration, a oneness energy. So Adria is with us today. She combines astrology with Angel Reiki, her intuitive nature, and really performs these amazing readings. Um, she's on today, though, to talk about something I know nothing about whatsoever. There's a lot that is coming up um astrology wise and and adria texted me a couple weeks ago and she's like um don't know if you're aware but this spring we have some massive energies we're all going to be swimming in could we do an episode on the show and i'm like come on friend you know let's talk about this because everybody needs to hear it we all feel it as we're going through different energies i know nothing about astrology though except for what i've learned from adria adria welcome to the show Hey, thank you so much, Julie. I appreciate the welcome and glad to be back. It's always good to be here with you. Yeah. Yay. Um, so, yay. So, yeah, today, honestly, and it's funny, a couple of the words that you picked in your introduction are perfect. So, yes, yeah, swimming in energy is a great way to describe what's going on. So, yeah, I just wanted to talk a little about, and I know we covered some things at the, the very beginning of 2022 as far as what was happening um, astrologically. But just I'm really excited about what's coming in April. And I think that this is a great opportunity to share some of that information with your um, with your audience. Yeah. Um, so essentially, there's a there's a conjunction that happens in April. So right now, as we're recording this, we are in the middle of um, Pisces season. And we will be for um, for a little bit yet, but probably not when this is airing in April, we'll be into the Aries season, which is fiery and fun. So some stuff to uh, talk about there as well. But I really wanted to spend a little time talking and sharing some information around this Jupiter-Neptune conjunction that's happening in Pisces in April. So, um, just to give everybody a little bit of background, and I won't go too far into the astrology and bore you guys, but um, this conjunction only happens, um, about, well, the last time it happened was 166 years ago. So it's not a very common occurrence astrologically. Now, Jupiter does come conjunct with Neptune more frequent, but not in Pisces. And I'll give you a little background about what that means and why I feel that's so significant here in 2022. So um, just a couple of things uh, as in terms of what all of these planets mean, and then I'll give you my take on what I kind of see, how that is coming together this year. But Pisces um, is a sign really of unlimited water. So it's very flowing. It's a very spiritual sign. It's very, um, the energy there is not, um, it really connects earth with the heavens with however everyone views that but it is a very spiritual um, sign in the zodiac 
And Neptune is the ruler of Pisces, but Neptune is also the Lord of the sea. So I think you're kind of getting a theme here where a lot of this water energy is very flowing. And with Neptune in Pisces, it makes that even stronger as far as what's happening in that element and with all of that energy right now. But Jupiter is our planet. Jupiter goes, um, goes around the zodiac about every 12 years and um, it's a very expansive planet. So when it comes across something else in, um, in astrology, it tends to really expand, to exaggerate, to, to amplify things that are happening. So when we're talking about Pisces and we're talking about spiritual energy, uh, it's, it's a time right now that is really sort of doubling down on a lot of um, a lot of that energy and that flowing that's going to be happening. So let me, um, let me talk a little, I guess I want to break it down. I'm going to talk a little about some of the negative potential aspects that can happen. And then I really want to spend most of the time that we have today talking about some of what I see as the more um, positive aspects that are the positive situations that can come out of this particular um, conjunction. So Big expansive water, certainly one of the negative things that we might see is um, some flooding. So flooding literally in terms of water in different places around the globe, that is a possibility. Um, but also emotional water, tears, you guys, this is a very, this is a very empathic time. This is a very sensitive time. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if, um, if you're listening and you're more of an empath and you feel a lot anyway, this is likely to be a very sensitive and could be emotional time um, that we're coming into. And this is this is April. And let me be clear. Yeah, the the actual conjunction is um, on the 12th of April, but these are slow moving planets and this isn't a one and done. It's not like it's going to hit in one day. This is really stretched out over um, probably a couple weeks time period and then I'll, I'll get into some more of kind of how I think that is going to set the tone for the next several months coming up but so negative another thing to really watch for and I think I've talked about this on your show before is um, just Neptune can create somewhat of an altered state or confusion right so it, it can represent um, communication that just isn't clear people aren't really connecting not really understanding um, sort of hypnosis like um, maybe not really being awake to what's happening or what's going on around you so these are some things that could happen that we might see again things not being what they seem um, but it's just sort of that whole uh, understanding of, you know, what is the bigger picture, what's happening here, and maybe some confusion. I know, I've seen, and I've been confused by everything that's been going on. There's a lot of crazy going on right now. So um, certainly, those are, those are some things. The other thing I find is interesting is um, Neptune is actually connected to fuel and Jupiter expands things. So my goodness, I see the fuel prices are starting to go up already. And that is probably something that we'll continue to see for, um, for a period of time. So not really anything intuitive because we all see that's happening, but interesting how those planets are connected. And um, we're already kind of seeing some of that. So those are some negative things. Any questions, Julie, at this point? No, no, it's interesting though. Um, it's interesting that all of this is in the signs, right? Yeah. And within astrology, like that's just wildly fascinating. It's interesting too, because I was looking last night and it looks like there's already been a lot of flooding that's been happening in different parts of the world. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. there has been. And so has that, that already started or when are we like actually into this energy? We're, we're, uh, we're into it. I mean, okay. we're into it right now. It's going to peak in April. Um, but yeah, it's already started with all of the planets that we have already that are in Pisces. There's all of that water energy. That's just a Pisces season thing, but this is even more amplified because right. yeah. Mm -hmm. So when are we out of this? <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all want to know, right? Yeah. Um, I think to some extent, honestly, we're going to feel a lot of this sort of um, 
sort of the spiritual energy hanging on for a long time. And the reason I believe that is the astrological new year, if you want to call it that, is is when Aries is the equinox, because Aries is the first sign of um, the zodiac. And that starts actually... Um, in April, in mid-April. Oh. So it's sort of like you take a snapshot of what the sky looks like and it sets the theme. It's sort of the energetic overtone, if you will, for what's coming. For like the le- next 12 months from that point. Exactly. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I know, okay. right? Yeah. <laughs> so Adria's <laughs> going to give us some good stuff so that we don't feel like we got to buckle in completely. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. But I mean, as I mean, as we all know, there's um, there's both sides, right? Yeah. So yes, but those were some, I started out with the negative things. What I really do want to concentrate on is all these positive aspects that are coming with this. So the positive expression of all of these planets and these signs that I've been talking about, really, it's a very high level of energy. It really touches the divine. It's a lot around, and I know, um, I think we just came out of oneness uh, in, in your in your angel programs and just yep. a lot of things that I know people are angel learning membership. right now. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. angel membership. Is, um, it, it's really a magical time in and of itself, just being and going through that Pisces with Neptune in there. And that being amplified is just, it's like a sacred energy, Julie. It's just mm-hmm. really, it's beautiful, you know? Yeah. 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 And one of the things that um, that I wrote down when I was just sort of collecting my thoughts around why this is so beautiful is, and I don't know if you're feeling this too, but I'd love to hear, is this energy to me is more than just human energy. And when I say more than human, I mean connecting us to the earth, connecting us to animals, to all living beings that are here. And it's, um, and you know, maybe because I don't know, spring's around the corner, or we're just getting excited for that season. I'm not sure, but um, just sort of that sacred energy of all living things being connected and oneness, mm-hmm. I guess is what yeah. I would say. Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling that too, for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's also a really beautiful time to sort of discover more of your personal spiritual meaning, right? So why are we here? What is our bigger purpose? And I don't know about you, but those things keep coming back up and for me too, right? You know, and just sort of digging in one layer deeper and then one layer deeper. And, um, and that's been, and I think that will continue that's, as well. That's a big piece. And it's not so much the purpose, but that's a huge energy that I've been feeling right now is just um, so many people and myself included are really being walked through lessons by spirit, by God, by the angels, by their spirit team um, of peeling back layers. And it's almost as if we can't, truly see ourselves until we see something we i don't want to say don't like but don't want to be in another and then come back within ourselves and say oh i never saw that within myself yeah Yeah. absolutely yeah i i sometimes to me it's almost on this journey it's almost like i see the things i don't want before I know what it is that I want, right? So it's it's like shutting away old things that aren't serving me anymore or whatever kind of coming through that um, that process. But yeah. Yeah. I was on a um, healing, you know, every month in the angel membership, we do this group Zoom call healing with everybody. And so it's so fun because there's, you know, sometimes 50, 75, 100 people on Zoom and the energy is just so amplified with everybody there and archangel zed keel came in big time last night um and just talked to everybody about really surrendering really releasing and really calling upon um him archangel zed keel uh to help us do this work and what he said is um we're gonna be kind of like you said entering into this phase of needing to continually surrender, right? Because we're always working on ourselves from the day we're born till the day we die. And there's different things that are going to come up. And 
the part of this process that, that I think is hard for a lot of people is how much the egoic mind wants to get in the way, right? And just kind of keep us stuck in those same patterns and keep us thinking the exact same things that we have thought for years and keep us um, acting in the same ways that we've been acting for years. And what Archangel Zadkiel means by surrender is instead of um, allowing yourself to attach to all of those past patterns, surrendering the patterns themselves, surrendering the egoic mind thoughts, surrendering the pain that we feel within our body when we look at these things within ourselves, because it's not a fun thing to go through, right? It's not fun to see things within ourselves, but when we do kind of surrender the pain that we feel within ourself, um, the thoughts that we're thinking, when we do take different action steps that we haven't taken before, um, what ends up happening is we that's kind of the process, right, of giving it over to God. We let them take the weight of it, but we're doing the action piece here of surrendering by going in a different direction than we've been. Wow. Yeah, that's so beautiful, too, if you think about it. But yes, uh, I love yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, and just that. one more thing about that. Archangel Zed Keel also said for everybody listening, you can really imagine this imp is it uh, that word impenetrable right like it can't get through like it's tough even tougher than steel um want archangel zedkiel wants everybody to visualize at any moment when you surrender something it can put you into a vulnerable energetic state and so what he showed everybody last night is that we can imagine this um impenetrable um egg shaped protective barrier uh what did he call it last night um like a shield right but it goes in the egg shape all around us in front of us behind us above us below us to the sides and when we're in this bubble everything good can come in all the love all of the joy, passion, excitement. Um, but we're just keeping ourselves protected from all of the heavy energies outside of us. Um, not that we don't continue to pray because we're going to talk about this. There's a lot happening within the world. Not that we don't continue to take action and step up in the ways that we feel called. Um, uh, we absolutely do, you know, help financially, help you know, wherever we can. Um, but it also helps our energy as empaths just to imagine this protective layer around us. And kind of going back to what you and I were talking about, Adria, at the beginning of the year when we were forecasting all of 2022, the angels really want us to keep our eyes on the vision of this world that we want to leave for our grandchildren and our great grandchildren. And that means visualizing peace, visualizing humanity as having evolved into a greater understanding of themselves, a greater understanding of peace and joy and love. And um, it's funny because I know we're going to talk about this, but it all keeps coming back to when we work on ourselves individually, we're actually doing the work on the collective because we're part of that. Absolutely. 110% Julie. Yes. Yeah. yeah and I, I, I think it's the same. I think just knowing what's happening astrologically and what, what can we do? I mean, we're not going to ignore what's happening in the world because it, it's, it's real, right? It's real. But, um, but at the same time, at least from my perspective, if we focus on and we're really sort of tuned into the fear and the anger and some of that, then that, ends up getting amplified. So it's really just about understanding and letting that pass through and just really feeling into your heart and bringing in the love and the joy. And like you said, the future that we want to create for our grandchildren, right? The generations that are going to follow. Um, yeah, that's so important. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh, oh, I love you're that. Good. I know. No, I love no, you. You're good. You're good. 
<laughs> yeah, no. So there's just this, there's just this huge opportunity um, for really for this community to take advantage of this season, right? Now is the season. Now is the time when if you're working on yourself, your connection with your angels and your guides, you're just meditating, whatever it is you're doing to really have that spiritual practice. Oh my goodness. Now is the time and the energy of the cosmos is 100% behind that and supporting that. So I think it's just going to be a really beautiful time, a psychic sensitivity I have, um, and even feeling beneath the words. I don't know if you're getting any of this yet, but, um, it's been more and more interesting to me. And even in some of my sessions, it's come up where I've been really guided to say, you don't have to necessarily have that conversation out loud, but just you're connecting with that person and maybe sitting in silence and sort of, um, I don't know how you, it's just like the, the feeling that's beneath the words right now. I don't really know how to explain that. Go deeper. Yeah. So what would that um, look like to somebody who's listening? Maybe, maybe just silencing our voice sometimes and, and allowing, um, allowing spirit to just really guide our actions and not always feeling like i guess what i'm what i've what i've sensed and what i've come across is just yeah we want to we want to say well it's this or it's this when really it's just about maybe letting the other person talk a little more or just just being still and even holding space for someone right mm -hmm. yeah and letting that just letting just letting it be and accepting that yeah, they, they may not see the same thing that we do, or we may not see eye to eye on a, a specific situation, but it's not about winning an argument. It's just about loving that person and accepting them for who they are and where they are. Yeah. Does that make sense? It so does. Yeah. I talked about this last night on the, the um, angel membership call a little bit, and um, I was really being just raw and vulnerable over there, and I'll, I'll do it again over here. Um, I made a mistake, and uh, I, I had a reason for why I did what I did something, um, but I hurt somebody in the process and I didn't mean to whatsoever. That wasn't my intention. And so I had to go to him and just say, I'm so sorry. Like this, I I'm just so sorry. And the first couple of days when I thought about having this conversation, my egoic mind was just so loud. And it was like, but this is why, like, this is the reason, this is why I did what I did. And I knew I couldn't have this conversation and say, I'm sorry, until I could, didn't have the butt with it, right? Like, because I knew if I was going to have this conversation at first, it was going to be like, I'm sorry, but this is why I did what I did. And I, I'm trying to, um, a spirit came in and said, that's not a true, I'm sorry. A true, I'm sorry is I'm sorry. And there's nothing else that comes after that. And so they said, don't say it just yet. You'll say it when you're ready. You're not there yet. And so I've gone through a couple of different things over the last few months and what I've recognized is it's okay to sit on it. Like I, you don't have to go have the conversation right away. Spirit is leading you and working with you. And all you have to do is remain in oneness, remain connected through your daily spiritual practice and allow them to guide you. And I did get to the point where I was like, no, I just need to say I'm sorry. And I see this other person with love and respect and kindness. And I just need to go say I'm sorry. And there is no but. And I've learned from this and I've grown from this. And I'm so sorry that I hurt you, you know? And um, I got to tell you, Adria, that did not feel good to my egoic mind whatsoever. I, that experience, I felt like my egoic mind kicking and screaming the entire time, um, but it felt so good to my soul, right? Um, to walk through that and to grow from that and to learn from that. Um, and so that's what I'm seeing right now is a lot of that work happening. That is such a great story. 
And it's so true. And when you can really just say you're sorry from your heart mm -hmm. and just, and it's it, no but, just no but. Yeah. No but. Yeah. I love that. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, I covered a lot of this. I mean, generally it's just um, a big upgrade that's happening right now. And as crazy as the world is, I think it's important for people to remember that spirit is here and things are happening and it is a great time for us to grow and to strengthen our relationship with spirit whatever that is to you you know individually whatever everybody listening is in a different place and that's beautiful be in your own place but um, it is just a great time to really connect and grow and i don't see this is this is one of those seasons astrologically and like i said it's not like it's going to happen and then it's going to be gone i really think it's like a tone or a, a sound or a chord that's hit right now and it's going to resonate out for the next year that's coming which um which is exciting and yeah there are some negative things that could happen in all of it but um what an opportunity for us to just really you know embrace that right now so so speak to the positives one more time tell everybody like the the positives like in a short synopsis okay so um what i wrote down when i was preparing here is just high level energy touching the divine it's a magical time and it's magnified so the potential tapping into that huge um, it's a sacred energy about all living things being connected um, and understanding spiritual meaning, whatever that is for you, right? Um, feeling beneath the words, right? So getting past what you want to say and what that real feeling is behind it. Um, unconditional love and um, spiritual service, right? What are we sending out to the world? And Julie, you can do this from your house. You can do this from your car. You can do this all by yourself in a room with no one around. It's just about sending out that love energy into the world. It's real. It's it's like Reiki energy. You know, it's love energy. It's that vibration that we can tap into and be part of changing that future and making this, you know, a beautiful, wonderful planet that our grandkids and generations, you know, ahead of us are going to be able to really enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I love that. Um, there's a couple of things that are coming to mind. So as we step into this, because we talked about it in the 2022 forecast um, in January, beginning of January, like spirit kept coming in and saying there's going to be this huge great awakening like the biggest awakening that we've seen yet and you're right it's a different energy though where um there's almost a continual peace and oneness that you can tap into vibrationally um that wasn't always there before but you're right it's almost i talk about it in the book when i talk about the cherubs and archangel sandal fun the cherub's responsibility is to open that gate between heaven and earth and you could call it the veil but open all of the energy to oneness to god's vibration and it's almost as if that energy is just completely open right now and i think that what you're saying is that energy is going to stay open over the next you know 12 months um and as it does you can totally see how us working on ourselves correlates with that i mean if oneness is held open we're constantly open to getting into oneness at any time and we can therefore go through life make mistakes have different challenges arise see our own humanity forgive ourselves love ourselves more take the action to correct little things within ourselves that we want to make better and and at the same time it's it's able to happen what archangel sandalfun just said because the cherubs are holding open this energy for 
us to really feel into the duality of both. And what he just whispered in my ear is, as you feel the duality of both, we all continue to choose love more. We all continue to choose oneness more. We all continue to choose change more. And and that change, like I was talking about earlier, it doesn't feel good Like to me, I don't know about you, like when I have to look at myself and be like, okay, I need to change this over here. Um, That doesn't feel good. But what they're saying is that the cherubs are holding open this energy so that even as we go through these changes and these shifts within ourselves, we continue to hold that peace, love and oneness and really feel it through the pain. Does that make sense? Absolutely. It makes sense. And it's funny that you talk about the duality because that's something that spirit has been working with me on more recently, because I think at some point, I mean, maybe I'm the only one, but don't we all kind of struggle with, well, why do we, why do we have to deal with this? You know, why does, why can't we just be in oneness all the time? And what spirit really brought into me was that that's why we came here, Julie. Yeah. We're here because we, because we can have this dual experience and it is important for our soul and wherever we're at in our growth. But at least the message for me was, and I think what's relevant in our conversation is that, yeah, sometimes the the duality is, it is not sometimes it is challenging, right? Yeah. But that's why we're here. Yeah. And really embracing it gets us out of even just singly being into the 3D world, if you want to call it that. But and knowing and expanding and bringing those together, it's super powerful. It is. It is. So one of the things that you and I talked about before we hopped on today was um, the fact that there is a lot of free will energy still out there. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of energy of... Um, There are people who say everything happens for a reason. No, you know, individuals have free will and things happen because someone chooses of their free will to go one direction or another. And there's a lot of free will energy right now where decisions have not been made. And what I mean by this is sometimes I can, in a reading, tap into somebody's energy. I work with a lot of business owners and um, I can see their vision, right? Like they'll have a 10-year vision, a five-year vision, and they know exactly where they're going. They know the steps they're going to take. They know the strategy behind it and they're on their way. And spirit will come in to validate that. And then there's other points where there is no, I don't want to say no future picture, but there's two future pictures and the decision has not been made of which which direction we're going to go. And so I want to talk about this and just kind of like break us into this, um, Adria, because as we're feeling all of this energy, oneness is open to us at all times. We're all doing some shadow work right now. We're all working on ourselves. Spirit is calling on every person to do their work because it ties into the collective. At the same time, we really have to hold open this vision ourselves of what this future is going to be for humanity because what the angels just whispered in my ear, and this is a lot of the seraphim coming in and Archangel Michael, is that we're all part of that choice. Yes. Obviously, some people have hands-on buttons and some people have bigger decision-making power, but all of us right now, you can feel it. We all have part in this choice. And it starts with us just visioning what we want this world to look like. Um, And if that's hard for some of you, what the angels just whispered um, to tell you is that imagine yourself having, even if you don't, just imagine yourself having grandchildren and great grandchildren. And if you had those grandchildren and great grandchildren, what would you want 
their life and their world to look like? How would you want it to look different from how life looks and feels right now? And as we choose ourselves to make space within this next year to hold the vision of the collective, what's coming in our future, I think it brings and pulls in energies that do influence the outcome. Yes, no, I would agree. I would, um, I would add from my perspective, kind of how I see it is like you're in a plane and you got on the plane because you were going to a place, right? I mean, we normally get in a plane so we can travel and be at our destination and um, then turbulence hits. Okay. And sometimes that really scares people and they get really focused on, oh my God, the plane's going to crash. We're going to go down, you know, and, and, um, and that's when the fear kind of sneaks in. Right. So it's almost like remembering, like you said, what your vision is and where you want to see this world, this earth, where, where that, where you'd like to place that, where you want to go, what is that destination? And there's going to be turbulence right? It's real. I mean, there are things going on around us, but um, I guess just remembering and believing in that destination, in that vision and holding that, I think that really sends out the energy that we need as a collective right now. Well, and the angels just whispered this, they whispered it before, but I forgot to mention it. Um, it all comes down to to our empathy. We're all very like if you listen to this podcast, chances are you're a very highly sensitive, very empathic person. And um, what I mean by that is I don't just watch something on the news. I can't just watch it. I feel the emotion within my body. It resonates through every cell. I take on other people's emotions and feel it completely. And so I think we have to watch as empathic people, how we're swimming through this energy over the next year. And when we're able to kind of consume information, when we're able to handle going to lunch with some people who are maybe heavier energies for us um, and where we just need to give ourselves more self-love and more breaks and more just time by ourselves. I don't know about you, Adria. I've had people in my life growing up who loved alone time and um, I, I saw it on social media and they said, you know, some people are the type of people when they wake up in the morning, as many people as they see, it drains their bank account coins. Every person that they interact with, it drains them. And yet for me, I feel like every person I interact with, I get coins, right? As more of an outgoing person. Um, extrovert. And, and yet I've had to learn how to keep some of those coins to myself and get them by just spending time with my own energy. And I think that's another big lesson that spirit is bringing in. We can't move through this next year. Um, by being feelers who are feeling out into the world, we have to move through this energy by feeling what's in our own bodies, what's in our own frequencies, and learning how even as empaths to really clear our own energy and um, and stay in oneness. And so, um, if anybody's listening to who's like, okay, yeah, but Julie, how do you do that? Um, in May, May 1st, we're headed into a new course, um, which is working with Archangel Michael and learning, or sorry, Archangel Raphael and learning how to keep all of your energy clear. So you can check that out on the website if you're interested in um, taking that course with us. But uh, um, I, I feel like it's really important as empaths for us to make space for ourselves to just feel good. Oh, yes. And stay grounded. 
Mm -hmm. Yes. And remember what you can do mm -hmm. because it, it can feel helpless, right? But yeah. there are things that we can do to make in a difference. If it's a small difference, you know, it's just little things. It's about being kind to strangers. It's about, you know, helping someone if they need some help. I mean, just really small little things that we can do that, um, that represent the collective, right? Right. Yeah. Well, and I think that's it too. Um, I, I don't want to botch her name, but um, Amal Clooney. Um, I it, today as we're recording this, it's March eighth, and uh, it's International Women's Day. And I was seeing on online that uh, Amal Clooney was at the space. Or I don't know; it might have been years ago, but she was talking about how everybody feels called to do something, right? help in some way, serve in some way. And I think that when you look at that at an, an individual level, a lot of people look at that and be like, well, I'm just one person and me collecting these clothes and sending them somewhere, what is that going to do? Or me collecting these coats in the wintertime for kids, what is that going to do? Um, but if everybody on earth, all seven point whatever billion of us just did the thing that spirit placed within our mind and just um, took action in that one little way, no matter what it might be, we would be where we need to be as a whole. Yes, exactly. And it's not about, and I think just sometimes in our society and with all of the technology and what we see and people are constantly comparing themselves, right? And as if you have to do something really large to make some sort of impact. And that's not, that's not it at all. It's really yeah. about just the little things. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to go one level deeper into this before we go. I find that a lot of times the, my process to work through things just in my individual life when I feel fear is I have to look at the worst case scenario, right? And just say, okay, well, what's the worst case scenario? How would I deal with that? And then something happens within me where an energy opens up and I just find peace, right? Um, and what spirit just whispered is a lot of people and i you know it's march 8th this is going to air a month from now and april 4th um a lot of people i don't know exactly where we'll be at that moment but what spirit keeps saying is that a lot of people keep wondering or having this fear you know um of if we're going to enter into another war um, on a very global scale and what keeps coming to their mind and this is their egoic mind bringing this energy up is pictures we have all seen from different world wars and what the angels are very very clear about is that it's not going to be the same even if there was another something big it's not going to be the same and i don't believe that it's going to be on any sort of level in the same way that it was before. I don't think that it can. I think that we have evolved past that. And um, and so this, the angels really talk about what we've talked about before, keeping that vision positive, keeping that vision on what do you want the world to look like? So when your egoic mind tries to take you to this negative place, um, find peace in that, I don't see that coming. I don't see that on that large scale. Um, and instead of allowing yourself to run away with the fear, turn that fear towards your vision of what you want this world to look like. What would you add to that, Adria? Oh, Julie, I think you said it perfectly, and it's um, that's why that's why light workers are here. I mean, that's that's why we've all been tapped. That's why we've all come to whatever level of call it a spiritual awakening, whatever you want to call it. That's why people are listening to your show. That's you know, little by little, I'm not the same person I was 
two years ago or 10 years ago, right? Things are changing. And I believe that keeping that vision and staying really in a positive mindset and doing the, the things, the little things that we do every day that make the difference. Um, yeah, I think it's, um, I think it can be scary, but yes, I think there's a, there's a lot of positive. There's a lot of light. There's a lot to look forward to. I don't, I, you know, I mean, we, we can't say I'm predicting. I mean, if I look astrologically, yeah, there are certainly some challenges, but um, I don't think it's, I don't think it's going to end badly. I think it's going to run into some changes that have been needed for a really long time. You know, I mean, when we talk astrologically, the big one um, this year is, of course, um, we have the Pluto return for the U.S. And I know you have listeners outside of the U.S. too, but it's a significant um, astrological event that is really going to um, question um, how are we established? What are our, you know, who's in power? How do we, you know, how do we allow that? What's, what does that mean? And I think there are a lot of things that may be changing. Um, but I feel like that's all a really good thing. And we're evolving the way that we were supposed to. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. All right. So one more time, let's just reiterate for people, all the positives. Okay high level energy touching the divine it's a magical time it's magnified um, there's sacred energy all living things are connected uh, really understanding and digging into your spiritual meaning right veil is thin we talked about that right it is it is um oneness feeling beneath the words so really opening that and using that empathic ability that so many of your listeners have in a good way um, unconditional love and spiritual service mm, i love it adria always a pleasure to have you on the show um you offer sessions they can book on my website theangelmedium.com um thank you so so much for being on the show tell people just real quick about your sessions um, yeah, absolutely. So what I do in uh, my sessions is a combination. So it's not it's not just a, an angel Reiki session. It's very astrologically driven. I'll go over birth charts and bring in what's happening right now astrologically. How does that tie into your individual chart? Because that's really, I mean, you want to go a level deeper. That's really interesting. So that's always fun. And just to really help people understand some people want to know, you know, what's what's my purpose? Why am I here? Or um, they're just looking for answers or looking for direction. And there's so much in your chart. So um, I love to share that information. Well, and it's so interesting. One of my friends who's a healer always says um, the best way to know if you got a good reading is if you had those intuitive hits before you went in and you leave saying like, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Um, so like you and I just did a reading together. I did a reading with you um, like a month or two ago. And my egoic mind was like, get to the next book, get to the next book, get to the next book. And intuitively, I was hearing fall, 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 um, like, like get to it and fall. And so you read my chart and you were like, did you know you're going to be writing another book, but it's going to be starting in the fall? And I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Thank you for confirming and validating. <laughs> um, so a reading with Adria helps in that way where, where you get this validation of Okay, I knew that intuitively. And and this is a part of readings that people often don't talk about. It helps you become more intuitive yourself because when you have those validations and somebody is working with you in that way, um, for a lot of people who aren't skilled at using their intuition, it helps them develop that trust. Like, okay, I can listen to that voice within me and here's how you do it. Absolutely. Yeah. I get a lot of that. Thank you. Yes. That's what I needed to hear. That's what yes. I, yes. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Adria, I love having you on the show. Anybody who wants to book a session with Adria, you can look in the show notes below and you can um, find that information there. And um, I definitely hope you do book with her. She's a lovely, wonderful, wonderful person. Um, thank you, Adria. Thanks, Julie. Happy to be here today. Yay.
beautiful souls. I just want us to take a moment and pray together. I want you to start by taking a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And I just want you to feel your crown chakra opening at the top of your head. I want you to feel God's loving oneness energy pouring like a waterfall of love into your entire body, surrounding your auric field, filling every molecule of space within you, surrounding you. And I want you to feel that you are so filled to the brim with oneness energy that it begins to radiate out like the rays of energy that radiate out from the sun. And friends, what I want to do this month is every time you come to the podcast, I want us just to pray together. The reason we pray, we have shown it scientifically, it does make a difference. When you pray, they have shown scientifically that it does something within another person's energy field. That person might not know that they are being prayed for, but something is happening energetically. So let's just come together today and pray. There's a lot happening in the world right now, and this is not about letting fear consume you. This is about taking your energy and directing it the way you want it to go. And so we're going to use our intention today. We're going to use the love that God has just poured into us today to radiate that love out, radiate our intent, prayers, ask God to surround angels with the people on earth who need it. And in particular today, we're going to ask that God surround with angels the people of Ukraine, to provide the people of Ukraine with angels that give them strength, that give them hope, that give them divine wisdom. Friends, this isn't a political thing whatsoever. This is a human thing. This is a collective consciousness thing. And what we're doing today is bringing more love into this world. So I want you to just take a moment to pray with me. Dear God, universe source, we know that there are babies that uh, should be in a NICU right now, special needs children who should be in an ICU hospital right now, who are not able to because of the conflict that is happening in Ukraine. And God, we ask you to protect those children, to heal those children, to surround those children with the angels that they need to give them everything, to become fully 110% healthy. God, universe source, we pray for the mothers who are pregnant right now, who are fear-filled of how they're going to give birth where they're going to give birth. We ask you to put their hearts, their minds at ease and create a safe place for them to bear children into this world. God, we pray for the displaced families, the children who are unsure of what's going on, who have fear in their hearts. We pray for those children to be surrounded by angels of comfort, angels of love who fill them up so that they know they're not alone and they feel a semblance of safety, of security. We also play, pray for those displaced families, those who are left behind, those who are still fighting. God, we ask you to give them courage. We ask you to give them strength. We ask you to fill them with every single thing that it is that they need to get through this time in their life. 
God, Universe Source, we ask you to provide everyone in Ukraine with angels to surround them. God, Universe Source, we also pray for those who have lost somebody in this conflict, that you help bring healing to the hearts of those who are left behind. And friends, I just want you to take a moment to add in your own prayer right here, right now. Friends, your angels ask you to hold a vision of future earth, and that is one filled with peace, with love, where there is all peace on earth. And if your egoic mind comes in, gets in the way and says, that's not possible, Julie, it is. We all have to hold that vision within our minds right now. So start by holding it within yours, by seeing all of earth as peace filled, as loving towards one another. Your angels say that now more than ever, it's so important for you to do your own work on yourself. Because when you're spiritually healthy individually, it leads to us being spiritually healthy as a collective. So doing the work on yourself individually lends itself to peace within all. When you have peace within you, we can have peace within the collective. So friends, please know that your angels do not want you to be fear-filled. They want you to, anytime your egoic mind brings in fear, use your intention, use your ability to pray. There is no wrong way to pray, to pray for people you care about, even if you don't know them. Use this opportunity to look at your own life and the lessons that God, universe, source, your angels are trying to bring into you right now on how to bring more peace into your life. So that as you create a more peace-filled world for yourself, we can come into a more peace-filled collective as a whole. Friends, I want you to see one more time, peace on earth, peace within yourself, peace within your own life. I want you to send that energy that you are filled with, that oneness energy out to the world, out to the people of Ukraine, out to everyone on this planet who needs it. Remember, it's not coming from you. It's coming through you from God, universe, source. If you allow it to, that oneness energy is an unlimited source that will flow through you to everybody who needs it here on earth. Friends, thank you for coming together. Thank you for praying with me. Thank you for sending love out into the universe. Every single time your egoic mind tries to bring you back into a fear state, I just want you to stop for 30 seconds, call in your angels and just pray. Just feel that oneness automatically radiating within your body and just send it out into the world to those who need it. Friends, I love you. Spirit loves you. Your angels, your loved ones on the other side, they are looking out for you. They're with you right here, right now. Open up your heart to miracles, to blessings, to this vision of peace filling this world. Bye, friends.